thank you for joining me for another episode of Prime Math Zoom. Today, we will be focusing on performance tasks. So the performance task that we want to work on today is a task that we want to entitle tailoring. So you do know what tailoring is about, right? Now, tailoring is about making clothes, basically. Making pants, making shirts, making dresses, and so on. So let's dive right in. William is sewing some pants for himself. And this is the rule for how much fabric he needs to buy. So first, he needs to measure from the waist of the pants to the finished length of the pants. Now, for example, it would be like this. Let's get our tape measure. Look for the zero line. Right, so we have the zero line. We're going to put the zero line at the waist of the pants and we're going to measure all the way down to the pants length. And here we have 17 inches. So let's go and see what the rest of the rule is. So we measured and we got 17 inches. Next, we need to double this measurement. So do you know what we mean by doubling measurements? Yes, when we're doubling measurements, we're multiplying by two or we're adding the value twice. So let us just multiply by two. 17 multiplied by 2. All right. 2 multiplied by 7 gives us 14. 4 ones, 110. So we're going to put the 4 ones under the ones column and we're going to bring the 110 to the tens column. So here in the tens column, 2 multiplied by 1 tens gives us 2 tens plus another tens will also will give us three tenths. So now we have 34 inches when we double it. Now the rule is not finished. We need to add eight inches. And we know what we mean by adding eight inches, right? Yes. So put our plus sign and add eight more inches. Eight plus four, that gives us 12. Good. Two ones, put the two ones under the ones column and we have one ten. So we're going to put that 110 in the tens column. In the tens column, we have three, and then we're going to add that to the other ten. So now we have four tens. So here, we would have calculated that it needs 42 inches of fabric to buy. All right. Now, William's measurement from his waist to the finish length of the pants is 35 inches. 35 inches. Now, if we remember the rule correctly, what do we need to do to this 35 inches? Yes, good job. We need to multiply, double that 35 inches. So we're multiplying by two. So 35 inches by two. Two times five. Okay, so here we have a 70 inches and the rule also say that we're supposed to add eight. So we're going to add eight to this. This gives us 78 inches. So William needs to buy 78 inches of fabric in order to make his pants. Right, we'll have gone ahead and calculated that. All right, so fabric is sold not in inches, but in yards. Hmm, did you know that? Yes, so each yard is equivalent to 36 inches. The smallest amount, smallest amount you can buy is a quarter of a yard. For example, if you want one yard, and 25 inches, you have to buy one and three quarter yards. How much fabric must William buy for his pants, for the pants? Now, what do we need to think about in order to respond to this? How much fabric he will need? All right, 
so we know how much he needs in inches. So what we need to do is change this out to yards. So if each yard is 36 inches, let's just get our tape measure and find 78 inches. All right, so you might not be able to see this. So let's work it on the board. If we have 78 inches and we want to see how many yards we can get from it, what would we need to do? Now, if you know about performance tasks, you'll know that performance task items, it's like a, a vegetable soup. Now, you have different vegetables mixing together. So in math here in a performance task, it is where we are mixing different concepts. So, of course, we would have done some multiplication, some measurement, and so on. And right now, we are going to divide the 78 to see how many set of 36 we can get from it. All right? So, let's try the easier way. Let's we'll subtract 36 one time. 6 from 8. 3 from 7. We have 42 more. So we can get 1 yard. Let me just get some space here. So far we can get 1 yard of fabric. And we have 30, 42 inches remaining. Can we get another yard? Let's check. Six from two, cannot get that. So we are going to break up this set of 10 into the four sets and we're gonna take one. Break it up here and now we have 12 ones and we have three tens remaining. Six from 12 will give us a remainder of six and three from three will give us four. So yes, we can get one more yard. So here we have one yard plus another yard. So in all, we have two yards. In having two yards, we have to check to see if there is some remainder and what we can get from this remainder. So if it is that we got two yards and we have six remaining, six would mean six inches. So we have two yards and six inches remaining. But remember what is happening here. We can get the smallest amount, which is quarter yard. And in quarter yard, it's like we can't buy a whole yard. So in this case, we have to break up at one yard in quarters. If we have six remaining here, are we going to buy one whole yard? Or are we just going to buy just two yards? Because we need six more. So we cannot buy less than what we need. We have to buy more. So now, if we want to buy quarter yards, so quarter of 36 inches would be what? Okay, good job. If we're finding a quarter of 36, we divide 36 by 4. So it's basically we have 36 as a whole and we're making 4 equal groups. So 4 into 36 will give us how many equal groups? Good job. 9 equal groups. So 9 inches is a quarter of a yard. So here, William will need to buy 2 yards. And nine inches. Great job. It's nice working with y'all. Now, Chris is also making some pants for herself. She buys fabrics, thread, buttons, and a zipper. We want to complete Chris's bill. Now, Chris needs two and a quarter yard, or Chris will buy two and a quarter yards of fabric at five dollars for a yard. Let us see if we can calculate that. All right. So, two yards and quarter yard would mean that we need to see how much for a yard. So, one yard is for $5.00. That would make two yards for $10. In that case, if we want to find out quarter yard, what would we need to do? 
All right. We know that the unit, the smaller unit that makes up dollars is cents. So can we break up $5 into cents? Let's try that. How many cents make $1? Yes, 100 cents make a dollar. So in $5, how many cents would make $5? Let's check. So 100 cents is a dollar. We want to see how much is $5. 5 times 0. Zero. 500 cents. So here, one yard is 500 cents. But we also want to know how much for quarter yard. So in order to find quarter yard, what do we do to find quarter? Yes, we divide by four. We divide by four. So in dividing by four, we want to see how many times four can come out of 500. So I would have gone ahead and done the calculation and I got 125 cents. So if you want to check if this is correct, we just need to multiply 125 cents by four. Four fives 20, four two is eight and two 10, one four one five, and we get back our 500 cents. Now, so now we would know that in order to buy this, we would have $5 for one yard, that means $10 for two yards, and we have 125 cents. Can we get a dollar from 125 cents? Yes, we can. So $1 from 125 cents would now make this $10, $11. And 25 cents would remain. So we'd have $11.25. And that is what Chris would need in fabric. So let us check about this two spools of thread at 35 cents for a spool. So if it's two spools he needs and it's 35 cents for one spool, how will we get that calculation? Right, we multiply the one spool cost which is 35 cents by two. So 35 cents will give us Seventy cents is seventy cents enough to make a dollar? No. So here we know that seventy cents is not enough to make a dollar. So it's just seventy cents. Let's just write in our responses to begin with. All right. So now three buttons at 25 cents each. What do we need to do? Good job. Multiply 25 cents by three. And there we have 75 cents. Is 75 cents enough to make a dollar? No. So we're just going to have 75 cents. Now, zipper. He needs a zipper, which is 60 cents. Just one zipper. So we're just going to wrap back 60 cents. Here, it seems as if he's going to get a discount. So it's asking for the total before a discount. So let us work out the total. So we're going to set it up our proper table so we're gonna have our dollars and we're gonna have our cents okay so how many dollars how much how many dollars eleven dollars and 25 cents then we have 70 cents then we have 75 cents and then 60 cents I'm gonna calculate all of that all right, so we're just going to go straight ahead and do our calculations. 0 plus 5, 5. 0, 5 plus 5, 10. Then 6 plus 7, 13 plus 7, 20 plus 2, 22, 1, 23. Now, this 23 means $2.30. Let's put our... Put a point here, then we add one plus two, 
3 and 1. So here we would have $13.30 before the discount. Let's write it here in black. No, the discount is 10%. Do you know how we find 10%? All right, let's see if we know how to even write 10%. When we talk about percentage, what are we referring to? We're referring to out of 100. So here we have 10%. That means 10 out of 100. And we write it like this. So 10 out of 100 means 10%. And we want to find 10% of $13.30. Which can be written as 10 out of 100 multiplied by 13.30 out of 1. Now, let us look at it like this. We have some things we can actually reduce. So we can reduce this fraction here. 10 into itself goes 1 time. 10 into 100 goes 10 time. Here we're left with 1 times 13, 30, and 10 times 1, which is the same as $13.30 divided by 10. So let us drop our division um, thing now. Okay. All right, so first, we have to say how many times we can get 10 from 1, and we can't. 10 from 13 goes, let me use my ready pen, goes one time. 10 multiplied by 1, 10. 10 from 13, 3. And we're going to the point, so we're going to put our point in, and we are going to bring down this 3. 10 into 33 goes 3 times. 10 multiplied by 3, 30. 30 from 33, 3 times. Then we bring down this last zero here. 10 into 30 goes 3 times. 10 times 3, 30. 30 from 30, 0. So here, the discount is $1.33. So if it is that, Chris was going to pay $13.30 in the beginning, and there's a dis discount of $1.33. How could we find the total after the discount? Of course, we could just subtract $1.33 from the $13.30. So $13.30 minus $1.33. So let's go. 3 from can't. Three from 10, 7. 3 from can't. So let's go. 3 from 12. Put back our point. 1 from 2. 0 from 1. And this would be the grand total after the discount that Chris will pay. I hope that you all learned a lot from this performance task. I would have been moving a little bit fast at some point, but please bear with me. So here we would have gone through a complete performance task and we would have touched concepts like addition, doubling, multiplication, um, percentage, measurement, fractions, Yes, the whole works. Thank you guys for joining us. See you next time. Please like and subscribe.